Imagine you wake up in the hospital, with absolutely no memory of how you got here, and quickly realise your hands can turn into knives. Or hammers, or pretty much anything, but mostly knives. So, with this newfound ability, what do you do? Do you escape the hospital, grab your favourite hoodie, play some of the most metal music known to mankind, and then go out slaughtering the entire population of New York? Or alternatively, do you wait to calmly speak to a doctor, and then pay your medical bills? Wow, that seems reasonable. Prototype is an open world action game that was developed by Radical Entertainment, a company which was owned by Activision. So obviously it was killed off a couple years later, RIP. Although at least we got two prototype games before its untimely death. Now being an open world game that came out in 2009, the original prototype had a lot of competition with games like Dead Rising 2, Fallout 3, Saints Row 2, The Funny Bowling Game, Web of Shadows and Arkham Asylum all coming out around that time. Clearly there was a massive influx in open world games during the late 2000s and it definitely felt like Prototype kinda got lost in the shuffle. Although in all honesty I can see why, like if I had to pick between buying this game or playing as Batman, well then the choice is obvious. To be fair, it's not like Prototype didn't look good, sure it seemed like another game with zombies in it and god knows we didn't need more of them, but other than that the trailer showed an absurd amount of destruction that will surely give anyone a swift boost in dopamine. Seriously, based on these trailers alone it looked like you could launch people into the nearest space station, steal a tank, cause a small earthquake and shapeshift into other people so you could blend in. Kinda like the funny space game. You're a sneaky little imposter. We also got a little glimpse into what the story would be about, having you piece together why the city is overrun with the military and zombies, as well as showing you who you'd be playing as, introducing us to Alex Mercer, the edgiest man you've ever met. Now I remember playing Prototype when it originally came out on my Xbox 360, and despite the fact that I shoved the story straight into the recycling bin at the back of my mind, the gameplay has always stuck with me for how fun it is, and also for how ridiculously violent it is. Is, which is going to make editing this video a painful experience. All clear. The game opens on a destroyed Manhattan swarming with soldiers, as it's been ravaged by a virus known as Blacklight, causing the average New Yorker to look like this. Old people and their pain. Anyway, we're quickly introduced to our edgy little boy, Alex Mercer, who wastes no time in telling you that he's responsible for all this and that three weeks ago he woke up in a morgue with a severe case of amnesia. Also, he makes it very clear that he isn't exactly well liked. Then the game gives you a little taster of what's to come, letting you play as a fully upgraded Alex Mercer, who at this point is a walking saw trap who fights tanks in his free time. Unfortunately, we can't have too much fun though, because we flash back to 18 days earlier as Alex wakes up in the morgue. Naturally, he's a little confused given the circumstances, and runs outside only to be greeted by the good old United States military, who shoot the fuck out of him. However, that doesn't seem to work, because as it turns out, Alex is now... You try your best to run away, but clearly Alex has a 5 star wanted level, because the military sends in a few helicopters to try and take you down, which goes about as well as you'd expect. After quickly sending them to the scrapyard, you stumble into an alleyway only to be confronted by a lone soldier who tries to shoot you. I wonder how many brain cells you have. Alex brutally kills this guy and then consumes him, kind of like Venom in the Ultimate Spider-Man game. Although there is a small difference that once Alex has finished digesting you, he's able to access all your memories as well as shapeshift into you. This becomes a major aspect of the game as since Alex has no memory of his life or what happened to him, he decides to target specific people which he can slurp up in order to find out what's actually going on and in Alex's own words, punish the people involved. Would you like a can of monster of that? You do this with the help of your sister Dana, who fills you in a few details like how Alex was a doctor working at Gentech, a big evil company which Dana has been investigating because apparently they're doing some slightly illegal experiments. With her knowledge and her expert hacking abilities, Dana points you towards a woman called Elizabeth Green, who's currently locked up in a Gentech facility. Alex obviously puts on a disguise and manages to infiltrate the facility, with the intention of having a calm discussion with Elizabeth to try and figure out what's going on. However, Elizabeth is absolutely filled with the black like virus, and upon littering her out, she begins to spread it across Manhattan. As you can probably tell, Elizabeth and the Blacklight virus are pretty much the main antagonists here, as you spend a huge chunk of the game fighting her and the various fleshy monsters she creates in order to save Manhattan. And I do use that term very lightly. The infected aren't the only things you'll need to worry about though, because the military, and more specifically a spec ops group known as Blackwatch, are out to get you. Which is kinda justified considering you are wanted for various war crimes. Seriously though, everywhere you look in this open world, the streets are filled with soldiers roaming around on high alert to find you. These orders coming directly from Lieutenant General of Blackwatch, Pierre Randall, 
Bell, who along with Captain Cross will stop at nothing to halt the spread of the virus and kill you. So with all that in mind, I spent the next several hours fucking around in the open world, turning these soldiers into tomato soup. But first, ad time. Now admittedly, I can't cook. My culinary skills basically consist of me being able to turn on a microwave or ordering a large pizza. Which obviously isn't great for my wallet or my waistline, especially considering I'm trying to get that ideal summer body. But considering I spend all day editing these days, I just don't have the time to make a lovely nutritious meal anymore. Well, that was until I found HelloFresh and suddenly I'm a 5 star chef. HelloFresh makes cooking easy, sending you weekly meals straight to your front door with over 40 delicious recipes to fit your appetite. So for example, I'm clearly a massive gym lad, so of course I picked the calorie smart options. I mean just look at me go turning all these ingredients into this gorgeous meal. HelloFresh is also significantly cheaper than shopping at your local supermarkets, meaning you'll never have to go to Tesco's ever again. No matter what your lifestyle is, from vegan to pescatarian, or even the rock diet, HelloFresh will always find a ton of recipes that you can quickly shove straight into your mouth. So what are you waiting for? Become your own personal chef today by going to hellofresh.com right now and use code alexweb16 at checkout to get 16 free meals plus free shipping. Or else, you'll upset Remy. And you definitely don't want to do that. Honestly, when it comes to prototype, you can just scrap the whole story part because this gameplay well, that's the real good shit, baby. See, unlike today's AAA games, I would rather focus on things like having a complex story that will make you feel empty inside or just walking around for nine hours. Radical Entertainment instead opted to give you a box full of various weapons, a densely packed open world, and a note saying, have fun. Simply put, this game's open world is absolute chaos and it is incredibly fun to just run around and fuck with random NPCs. Another step and you're dead. Prototype is the very definition of a power fantasy, giving you unlimited ways to create unbridled destruction across Manhattan, whether that be launching a car into a crowd of people, selecting one lucky contestant to partake in flying lessons, or turning an elderly woman into a human surfboard. Clearly, Radical Entertainment looked at the superhero games of the time, noted how they had morals, abided by the law, and most importantly were heroic, and thought to themselves, yeah, we don't need any of that. And thus they proceeded to produce a game that can best be described as what it feels like to be Homelander. Well, uh, minus all the milk drinking. However, if super strength, speed and invincibility isn't enough for you, well here's a fuck ton of weapons to shoot soldiers with. God bless America. Oh, what's that? You've ran out of bullets. Well then just turn your hand into a fucking sword. Should work just fine. See, since Alex is more virus than man at this point, other than being able to consume people, he can also transform his body into various weapons which makes the game even more of a bloodbath. You have a whole arsenal of claws, whips, blades, big hands and even a full suit of armour which you can use in a variety of fun ways like elbow dropping a tank, shooting spikes out of the ground or just mowing through crowds of innocent people. At least until the military shows up. Don't worry though, I'll just transform into an old woman. You wouldn't shoot an old woman, would you? The stealth, admittedly, is pretty dumb, showcasing that the AI may lack a functioning brain. However, it is kind of fun just to point at a random soldier and then watch his teammates terminate his existence. I'm sure that man had a family. Now, of course, destroying half New York isn't the only thing to do in this open world because there's a few side activities you can find littered around the map. Firstly, there's various people in the city who have valuable information locked inside their heads. So naturally, you can run around and consume these people, drinking their beautiful brain juice in order to gain more lovely intel. You also have more generic events like base jumping and races, but personally, I prefer the other activities like the Call of Duty style team deathmatch and the ones where the game just gives you a weapon and the sole objective to rack up a body count higher than your mum's. Obviously, you aren't forced to do any of this stuff, but the more of them you do, the more experience points you're gifted, meaning you can upgrade Alex to the point of being a fucking demigod by the end of the game. Anyway, once you've won all your gold medals, you can get back to other less important stuff like uh, making a cure. Unfortunately, this does mean you have to play through more of the main story, and this is where prototype kinda falls apart. See, the game really doesn't pick up steam until around the third act, with you spending a large chunk of the first act having Hackerman Dana point you towards the next person to consume, and then in the second act, you have super cancer. This is after you're injected with a parasite by Captain Cross that basically takes all your cool powers away for the next couple missions, which makes the game significantly less fun. To further add to this, you also have to listen to some of the most unbearably edgy dialogue I've ever heard. No, they're all dead. All dead. Except me. I bet that came straight from his journal. It isn't until the third act where stuff actually starts to get interesting, as with the help of Dr. Ragland, you're able to cure your super cancer and reverse engineer it into a weapon to use against Elizabeth Green. So the plan now is to inject Elizabeth with the cure and then everything will hopefully go back to normal. 
so obviously that plan doesn't work, and upon being injected, Elizabeth gives birth to a monster known as the Supreme Hunter. This leads into a boss fight where you not only have to fight the Supreme Hunter, but several of the infected and half the military. Would you recommend joining the Marines? Fuck no. And cut that out, please. I should also mention that it's around this point that the game's difficulty increases from a gradual incline to off the fucking charts. Seriously though, after you kill the Supreme Hunter, the game's difficulty skyrockets because now every soldier has a picture of you in their wallet just so they remember who to point their guns at. These latter missions fill up your screen with so much shit it's almost impossible to do anything without bullets raining down on you. Although I will say this sharp increase in difficulty is at least somewhat bearable until the final boss fight. But before we get to that, we need to finally figure out what actually happened to Alex. So after you defeat the Supreme Hunter, Alex is contacted by a secret informant who helps him track down the people involved in this whole conspiracy. This all leads to you locating and fighting Elizabeth Green yet again. Just this time she looks like this. The Forbidden Donut. Once you defeat her too, which took me like the entire night, she falls to the ground in her human form where Alex consumes her, and it's at this point you finally start to put the pieces together, figuring out how this all started. See, the Blacklight virus was actually created by Blackwatch, in an effort to make a viral weapon that would, uh, target specific races. Hey yo, what the fuck? The weapon was first tested in a small town called Hope in Idaho, but the virus mutated and went majorly wrong, transforming the residents into monsters with Elizabeth Green at the center of it all. So Randall decided the sensible thing to do was nuke the entire town. Elizabeth then became part of a new research program and was moved to a different testing facility which became known as Gentech. The whole project suffered multiple leaks though and Blackwatch eventually ordered it to be shut down along with anyone working on it to be terminated too. Alex, having more than two IQ points, stole a vial of the virus as insurance but that still didn't stop Blackwatch from catching up with him and then gunning him down. However, before Alex was killed, he smashed the vial unleashing the Blacklight virus upon New York and unknowingly into his own bloodstream. With the virus rewrote Alex's DNA. See, the Blacklight virus didn't just resurrect Alex, it became Alex Mercer, meaning you are the virus. Now yes, I know that's a lot to take in, but uh, we're kind of on a tight schedule because Randall is planning on nuking Manhattan. With the help of your secret informant who's revealed to be Captain Cross, you're able to stop Peter Randall from leaving the quarantine zone and finally consume him. But then, in a shocking twist, Captain Cross betrays you. Or should I say, the Supreme Hunter. See, at some point off screen, the Supreme Hunter consumed Captain Cross and has been using his identity and information to manipulate you, with his master plan being to ultimately consume Alex so that he can survive the nuclear blast. This leads into a final boss fight that is quite frankly, fucking infuriating. Sure, the previous boss fights had their challenge, but this one feels like a Dark Souls boss that's taken too much Adderall. It is a mind-numbing slog attempting to get this thing's health down because not only do you have to avoid the Supreme Hunter's attacks, which can easily one-shot you, but also you need to avoid the numerous soldiers running around that for some reason cannot tell the difference between you and Mr. Supreme. They're the same picture. At least in games like Elden Ring, you can formulate a plan, memorize attacks, and be fully immersed in the fight despite the fact you're about to suffer an aneurysm. But here, in a game plan you may have, gets thrown straight out the window as the Supreme Hunter is about as predictable as your dimension ridden grand. That. Why is there a fucking time? If you somehow do manage to defeat this boss, then the game ends with Alex flying the nuke out to sea before it detonates. An ending which the Dark Knight Rises would shamelessly steal three years later. Then the game comes to a close with Alex regrowing his body and slowly walking away into the shadows, recapping what he's just gone through with more of that edgy dialogue. What if I become something less than human, but also something more? Wow. Now upon release, Prototype received pretty decent reviews, but over the years I feel like the game has kind of faded into obscurity. Which is a shame because this gameplay is incredibly addictive, making you feel like an absolute god amongst men. It's just unfortunate everything else weighs the game down. I mean the story isn't awful and the whole mystery slash government conspiracy aspect is pretty cool, but it's so edgy and dark that I can't help but think it was written by a 14 year old. I think for me personally, Prototype kind of falls into the same category as the original Dying Light having gameplay that will make your mouth water, but also suffering from a story that will give you food poisoning. So honestly, when it comes to prototype, I think the best thing I can say is just skip the cutscenes, strap in, and enjoy this insane ride. Wait, I can't drive.